from Spanish Institute, who is the technical evangelist at Microsoft Czech Republic. Okay, so what's the result? So hi, uh, my name is Stefan, and uh, my hobby is uh, 3D printing and uh, things about uh, microcontrollers. And today I will show you some very, in, from my opinion, very interesting uh, microcontroller named uh, Arduino Uno, which combines traditional microcontroller by Atmel with small Linux computer on one board. So then you can, I think you can do very interesting things with that. So the first questions, why, why to interest in some kind of small computers? So my, I have uh, one reason. Do you know what's that? Of course, because I can, it's the most usual answer. This is a forest fire in uh, Montana, in the US. And if you want to monitor the fire forest, it's not so easy because you have a big forest. And to monitor if there is some probability of some forest fire, it's uh, very complicated. And then, but you can use some small computers, so autono some autonomous devices around the forest to check information for you and send you to data. Do you know what this? Yes, it's Fukushima. You probably know what happened in Fukushima, uh, but the biggest issue there, of course, the tsunami to destroy this uh, nuclear power plant, but the big issue was that this wave destroyed all monitoring stations for radioactivity around the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant. So no one, no one knew what's going on because there were no monitoring system, because everything has been destroyed. So the guys from uh, Tokyo Hackerspace, in cooperation with some uh, with, uh, one company in uh, uh, Spain, developed small Geigenmuller computers connected to mobile phone so everyone could go to that area, let the phone with Gigamel computer on the ground, and again escape. So there are mobile monitor stations made by people. You know this? It's Prague. Uh, it's a, a creek named Botic. And if you know the botage, the usual in botage is so much water. And uh, this is botage, uh, I think, uh, nine months uh, ago. So my hobby is to, or uh, one of my activities is I am working on homemade water monitoring system based on Arduino. So everyone can build it from open hardware and you can monitor your river next to you because those small rivers are unmonitored because the official monitoring systems are damn expensive. And it takes a long time to deploy. It's not Ostrava. It's Shanghai. Again, very interesting uh, project here in Czech Republic is Kanarci. Kanarci is a small monitoring system for air quality. Again, you can connect it to mobile computer and send the data. And everything, and again, it run on Arduino. This one can see. So, probably you don't want to be in areas like Fukushima or next to big water and so on, but you need the information. And this is the reason for Internet of Things and for Arduino. Uh, Internet of Things is, you can imagine, it's some um, kind of idea. And now we understand this term as some um, autonomous devices connected to some kind of the network. It, not, it uh, must not be necessary uh, internet, just some kind of the network collecting data to help you find some information to prevent some disasters and so on. The, m the most common thing you, we are using to monitor 
is environmental data. So we can monitor radioactivity, we can monitor air quality, water quality, and so on, and so on. And, uh, and uh, it's uh, quite easy now because uh, the electronics is not so expensive. The most typical users are geeks because they want to play with some cool stuff. A uh, couple of friends of mine are data journalists, so they are, they are working on projects measuring some environmental information for journalists because they can make uh, some story around that. So for example, we measured the quality of uh, highway surface of highway B1. We use accelerometer and uh, we measured noise before big reconstruction and we will do the same after the reconstruction. And maybe the, some journalists will find some interesting things. Out. So, and we will speak about hard data. Uh, if you want to measure something, what do you need? You need some sensor. You can measure almost everything you can imagine. It's a just question of the price. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot connect typical sensors directly to your computer because typical computer doesn't have communication bus typically used by the sensors. So for example, you don't have any I2C bus on your standard computer. Maybe you have UART, traditional serial port, maybe not. But it's, again, it's not so common now. So you need uh, something between your sensors and computer. And before I show you what you need, so I show you some microcontroller. I show you one sensor. If you can recognize what is it. It's quite funny sensor. This, I think it's the most in interesting one I have. Can you see it? Yes, yeah, sensor. So what do you think is, what is it? Uh, okay. the, this building is uh, probably full of those kinds of sensors. You are really close. This sensor is from air condition and it measures dust particles in air. And this is a very funny sensor because it's uh, designed for market. So the output of the sensor is number of dust particles in cubic feet. So, and for example, this kind of sensor is used in Project Canarsi measuring the quality of the air in the uh, city of Ostrov. Price, 14 US dollars for 280 So Maybe you can recognize this one. It's a light sensor, very simple one. This is the temperature. So you can really measure almost everything. And uh, as I told you, uh, those sensors are giving data in, let's say, quite strange way compared to standard computer peripherals. So you need something between sensor and your computer, and it's microcontroller. You will see a lot of microcontrollers uh, uh, from RD. The typical microcontroller is a very simple computer on one chip with low power, low memory, very low performance, but it's a very robust solution because on this chip runs just your software. There is no operating, typically, there is no operating system. So it's very, very robust solution. If something crash, it's your software, not uh, some operating system or something like that. It's very interesting to start develop software for those kind of uh, computers because you need to really change your uh, developer skills 
because you cannot you cannot work with the gigabytes of RAM. You typically work of with the kilobytes of RAM. It's very interesting, you know, to try it and go back in time and work with so low performance. The most popular microcontroller is Arduino or is uh, based or developed by Arduino company. Uh, those microcontrollers are, uh, okay, it's not a microcontroller, microcontroller on Arduino board is uh, designed by Atmel, but Arduino is selling small developer boards which are very easy to use. You can very easily connect some peripheries, you can very easily connect it to computer and so on. So do you know Arduino? Everyone. Okay. So let's show some Arduino boards. This is uh, Arduino Leonardo. This is Arduino Ethernet with Ethernet connectivity. This is Arduino uh, Mega. So all boards are very similar, but as you can see, the only one has some connectivity. The rest, there is no connectivity. You need to need, you need to add some external shields or external equipment to connect it to some kind of uh, network. But we have uh, another small and cheap computer based on Linux. Probably you know the most common one, Raspberry Pi. Do you know Beagle Board by Texas Instruments? Okay. Do you know PCB? No. And do you know Intel Galileo? You probably have a lot of about Intel Galileo. I will speak about uh, Intel Galileo uh, later. So it's perfect solution if you have some sensor network, you collect data inside those computers, it works perfect. But it's a very, very bad idea to use those kind of computers really taking information from the sensors. Why? It's a lot of power. You cannot run it on, on battery for a long time. This is the biggest issue probably. The second issue is there is a real operating system and you know there is too much things running on this computer, not just your piece of software taking data from the sensor. So this solution is too complex. Too much, too many things running on those kinds of the computer. But typically, this kind of computer, there is a very good connectivity to internet, Wi-Fi, Ethernet. So, oh, okay, first I show you a little quite interesting device named PC Duino. So this is a PC Duino. You can see it's uh, it's compatible with Arduino, you have uh, Ethernet, this is Wi-Fi, HDMI, so it's a real computer, and if you want to take data from some sensors, you can plug some Arduino shield, you can write uh, the software in Arduino environment, or you can, use, uh, you can use Python, you can use C, C++, and you can take data from the sensor. Uh, there is one more issue with those kind of the computer. Those computers are typically not real time. So you cannot predict how long will some operate, some calculation take. The small Arduino boards are real time computers. So, but how to put those two, let's say totally different worlds together? And one of the answer is Arduino Uni.
So the Arduino Uno is a combination of traditional Arduino computer, or uh, sorry, traditional Arduino board, and small Linux computer. Everything on one board. So this chip is from Atmel, and this chip runs traditional Arduino sketches. And the second, com and second computer runs Linux inside. So the Arduino part of uh, Arduino Yule is Arduino Leonardo. So if you give me a small look at it. So. so this is Arduino Leonardo. This is uh, Arduino Yule, the exactly same uh, chip on it. So it runs from bottom. So this is just Arduino Leonardo with uh, Arduino Leonardo with Linux computer on it. So all Linux computer is hidden, is hidden here. Uh, there are some uh, differences compared to Arduino Leonardo. So the first one and first most important one, there is no voltage regulator on the board. So if you plug it with something else, is, if, if, you, if you try to power it with something else that's five volt, you will destroy it. So there is no voltage regulator. It's first issue. And uh, second one is on Arduino Leonardo, you have a separate serial port. So you, there is one more serial port compared to traditional boards with Ar uh, Arduino Uno. So this uh, additional serial port you cannot use because this serial port is a bridge for communication with Linux computer. I will, uh, I will speak about it later. And uh, the last one, I think the guys uh, didn't think really good. As you can see here, this Ethernet connector is too high, so you cannot connect some shields. If you want to connect shield, you need some extender. Uh, the Linux part of Arduino Yule is a small computer with Wi-Fi, with Ethernet, quite a lot of memory on it, and there is a Linux distribution named Linino, which is based on OpenVRT. OpenVRT is traditional distribution for access points, uh, some smart switches, and so on. So everything runs, so you can use system for packages to install new software there. There is pre-installed uh, Python, and it works, I think, very, very good. The communication between the uh, Arduino part and the Linux part is through the serial connectivity. So there is a serial port on Linux computer connected to serial port on Arduino computer, and you can send the messages between Arduino and Linux and from Linux to Arduino. So you can very easily use the bridge library which allows you, for example, to run a Linux command from Arduino sketch and return the result from the Linux command inside the Arduino and process it inside the Arduino. Or from the Ar from Arduino part, you can save some information inside the Linux computer to Linux file system, and again, this data is very easy to read, for example, using the Python. You can install Apache on the Linux part and have access to all sensors connected to Arduino part directly, for example, from web browser, and so on. Of course, uh, compared to traditional Arduino, you need a more power, so you need a big battery, but it doesn't need so much, but uh, so much power. For example, as uh, PC Duino, because PC Duino is, let's say, the real computer with graphic card on it and everything. This is just very simple, low-powered Linux computer. It's, again, it's not so big performance uh, compared to uh, PC Duino. So, yes.
so we didn't get it. I need to check it. I don't read it by heart, but uh, typically it's tens, hundreds of milliampere. It's not uh, the whole amperes, but again, it uh, it needs uh, or it needs much more power compared to this simple Atmel board. But again, uh, for example, you don't need to. For example, if you don't need to send di data to the Wi-Fi you can switch the Wi-Fi off. And then you don't need so much power again. It's, uh, you know, it's a lot of about how smart you write your software. So for example, I am using on my project for monitoring the water level to protect people against floods. I am using, uh, I am using uh, GPRS shields because it's the easiest way how to get data to internet, deploy it somewhere. So this is a uh, this is a GPRS shield. This chip is a mobile phone. So this simple sketch here you can connect uh, the microphone and some speakers. So you can use it. This one you can use as a standard mobile phone because probably if you have some very cheap mobile phone and you open it, probably you will find exactly the same chip inside. And this, this stuff can consume up to two amperes. When is it sending data to the net, uh, through the mobile network, it needs up to two amperes. So it drains battery very quickly. But there is a one pin for switch it on and switch it off. So the typical usage is if you need to reduce the power consumption, switch all wireless communication off, then do what you need and switch this on only for the necessary part of the time. So this very, very, it very, it can help you lead to reduce the, the consumption. Using this system, so my, uh, when I'm sending data every one hour to internet from this uh, water monitoring system, it runs on a battery for a two weeks. Of course, it's not enough. I'm improving it, but it works for two weeks. Sending every hour data to the internet, sending uh, SMS message to some mobile phone to inform you about the water level. Do you know how to communicate this, this device from your uh, from your sketch, for example? Do you remember ATDT? What is it? To ring the phone. So you are using traditional AT commands. There is a big set of AT commands for. Uh, GSM networks. So, for example, if you want to send, if you want to send uh, uh, SMS, it's AT command. If you want to download uh, data from GPRS, again, it's AT command. It's very old-fashioned way, but it's there are thousands of commands for that. So, let's make some small demo. If I go here. Uh, if I power, uh, you can check your devices. You will see a new network named uh, Arduino U. It takes some time to boot it up. And I have some issue here. So I hope it will work. Uh, where is my Arduino? Uh, this is again, this is uh, another issue of those kind of devices that take a lot of time to boot it up. Sorry? The small one, it's eight, uh, 8 megahertz. And the big one is there is some ARM computer, ARM based uh, processor. I'm not sure about the frequency, I think it's 400 megahertz. Next set, I'm sorry. Yes, it's possible. Uh, all those small microcontrollers 
are uh, you know designed for a very low power consumption so you can control if is it running or not you can put it to the sleep mode and in sleep mode it consumes like micro amperes let's say nothing so i choose my board oh no arduino room so i can connect there Things wrong. I didn't connect. Start. Okay. So sorry. Again, I forgot to add some. A stupid area to put it. Okay. So again, so I will measure just uh, temperature. So we wait a little for connectivity. So it measures temperature, and uh, I have this very simple sketch. Uh, this one, this library, is from Bridge Library for Arduino Uno, and here you can see. I am saving data directly to SD card. So I'm using the Linux path because I'm sending, I'm saving data on the Linux computer and on the on SD card. So every 10 seconds, it saves data. And I need, come on. Okay, connect. So we are connected. I run my terminal application. Yun. Oh, come on. Hmm. Yeah, I'm connected. Okay. And as you can see, it's standard Linux environment. So I go to SD card, Arduino, here we are. I run Python server. And if you are connected to that board and you go to web browser, Very simple application reading data from the SD card and show the temperature. This one is absolutely not possible on traditional Arduino because there is not enough memory or, yes, it's, it can be done, but we have very interesting temperature here, I think. So maybe I connect it little wrong, but never mind, you can see how it works. So, this number is better. So it's very easy to combine those technologies together in, I think, quite interesting way. So imagine you can have a uh, lot of sensors, and if you just walk around, connect to Wi-Fi, look what's going on, you can, uh, you can make some settings, and so I really like this. And the code of, uh, in Python, it's very simple. I am running the Python web server and very simple page, just reading data from SD card and showing nothing really complex. Here you can see what's going there. Maybe someone trying to connect there from the browser. <coughs> Uh, 
quite interesting thing happened uh, during the Maker Fair in Rome uh, last October because Intel introduced this board named Intel Galileo. Uh, the board itself, I think it's not so very interesting device. It runs uh, the processor quark there is uh, this processor is something like Intel, old Intel fashion, old Intel 5 or something like that. Again, there is uh, running Linux inside and as you can see here, you, can, you have a couple of uh, uh, connectors, the same as uh, on Arduino. Uh, this board, I think it's, you know, to use it in some sensor network, I'm really not sure about that because again, it consumes a lot of energy. It can be maybe interesting some central point because if I show you the bottom, do you see this one, this connector? It's PCI Express. So you can connect almost everything. You can run any operating system on it. It's enough powerful to run Windows. So, but I think it's, uh, this board is very important, not just because this is the board and you can do it, but big company like Intel is interesting in, so, uh, in those kinds of devices. This is, I think, the most much more important. Uh, Intel Galileo is now possible to buy it. There are, uh, this one is a uh, uh, prototype. There are just two in Czech Republic, this kind. The new one is built a little different for use the little different technology, which is uh, open hardware. Uh, this one used the six layers PCB. Six layers is a lot. The new one on the market used just four layers uh, PCB, and it's much easier to replicate it. And another thing happened. Do you know Texas Instruments company? They introduced this board Arduino Trek and its combination of Beagle board and Arduino. Again, this board will consume a lot of energy, a lot of issues, I think there, is, there can be issues of this kind, but again, it's very important that another big company is interesting in those kinds of So, we'll see what happens in the future, but I believe that these toys will be more and more important and I will have a lot of possibilities to play with interesting stuff. Uh, is this board compatible with Arduino Trio or is it yes. both? Both. both. both? Uh, not both because there is a different distance. It's definitely compatible. Again, this is the prototype. Okay. I, they show, up, show it to us. I was able to look at it to take some pictures, but uh, it's a prototype, so maybe it will look different. It's definitely compatible with Arduino Shields, but it's, uh, the Beagle board is uh, more, uh, not so wide as this one. It's really big, you can see it in my hand. It's much bigger than Beagle board, so you cannot use the shields from Beagle board. You can use the Arduino shields. But it may change because it's just prototype. It's not uh, available on the market, as I know, the development is not finished. So we will see. So, I have five, last five minutes, so do you have some questions? Yes. It was, uh, I know, but uh, those small tweaks, it's very interesting. They are absolutely unmonitored because the one monitoring station cost, the cost of monitoring station start at 50,000 Czech crown. So device I'm working now, it's my hobby. It's built from Arduino, some available shields. So I'm on price less than 3,000 Czech crown. And 
it looks like uh, the guys from uh, the hydrologists they test it probably next uh, next month and it looks like the results are absolutely the same as from the systems for much more months okay some more questions Uh, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. You can connect it uh, through the GPRS. Yes. Yeah. So, another question. Okay, so if, you don't, if there are no more questions, if you want, just come and look to boards I have here. But thank you for attention.